So, a set of course of screenshots, we all love taking them, but how do you take realistic ones? Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do here in today's video. I'm, I'm going to be going over the main types of composition for photos, as well as getting realistic angles for both kinds of those realistic photos, and those are trackside or roadside shots, as well as rollers. The photos you're seeing right now are of trackside shots. These are going to be shots that are realistically placed uh, alongside walls of circuits or roads uh, that a person could stand to take a photograph. Then you have rollers, and these are where you have a camera car following a car and taking photos of it. They're a little bit more flexible with the angles they can get than the trackside shots, but they also are a little bit more challenging and easier to mess up. So I'll be showing you how to take all of these photos here in today's video. Really quick, I want to talk about a quick photography and video rule before we get into it. This isn't going to be very long-winded, so bear with me. The rule of thirds, if you don't know what it is, you want a little bit more in-depth explanation, Google it. But pretty much all you need to know is the vast majority of photos and videos are going to look the most professional when the subject of the image is in one-third of the screen. So whether that's the corners, the top, the bottom, or the middle, or they are going going to be on a side, so left or right. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule, and we'll go over that in today's video, but it's definitely something to keep in mind, and it is something I'll be hammering home as the video goes on. But yeah, enough chit-chat, let's get right into this tutorial. Before we get into game, though, there are two settings we need to immediately change. You're going to head over to your Settings tab in Content Manager, and under System, we're going to be doing two things. First up, your screenshots format. I would highly highly recommend you to use PNG. There is no real reason in 2023 why I'd want to use a JPEG, especially if you want to share these photos on like Discord. Using a PNG format will remove the compression that Discord uses and makes it all pixelated. So PNG is the way to go. And the second thing is you're going to want to make sure orbit mode for F5 cam is unticked. If this is ticked when you hit F5 on your keyboard, you're just going to have like this camera that spins around the car. It's pretty useless, but unticking this will give us the free cam that we want to use. So as I mentioned, there are two main types of camera shots, the trackside or roadside shots, and then we have rolling shots or rollers. We're going to start out with track shots right now. So first and foremost, when taking screenshots trackside, one of actually the biggest ways to make a photo look good is to drive well. So that's going to be hitting all of your apexes, that's going to be putting in a clean lap, not going off track, and not getting any damage either. So I'm going to do a lap around Laguna Seca real quick, and I'll come back to you when I am done. Alrighty, there was my lap in the Corvette C8R, so we could stop now and go into our replay, and this is where the fun begins. So, I'll immediately preface by saying there's no wrong answer to taking screenshots. If there's something that you think looks good, go for it. I'm sure it probably does, but if you want the realistic photos, that's what I'm going to be showing you here today. Hit F5 on your keyboard, and this free cam is going to come up now. In Laguna Seca, there are a few spots that I want to look at, and will be nice to show off some certain aspects that I'm trying to show off. The first one that we're going to go to is probably one of the most photo photogenic parts of the circuit, which is the corkscrew. I'm actually really mad at myself. Wow, I missed that up really bad. Okay, I redrove the corkscrew so I can get a better angle here. Wow, you do kind of go wide in the Corvette, but this is a better angle. So you're going to want to look for a real life track photo, a track side photo. You wouldn't be standing right here on the track during an actual session when the cars are going around, you're gonna be all the way over here. So pretty much rule number one is going to be, you always wanna be 
on a wall for trackside photos if you're trying to make them realistic because of course there wouldn't be a media person standing on the apex in a real life session but you're probably going well this is really zoomed out now this kind of sucks well we can of course just zoom in and i wouldn't do it too much actually on the corkscrew I would just have it like this, maybe zoom out actually a tiny bit there, get the WeatherTech badge in right here. You can rotate your camera with F and G as well. I hit D on accident. So you can get some nice angle. If you really want to emphasize the corkscrew, you can do this. For me, I do like to flatten the corkscrew out a little bit. It gives the car a nice natural looking bank and it looks very unique. So next thing to make photos realistic is, of course, you don't want this blurry image right here. You want to make it in focus, the car in focus. Now, you never want to actually tick this off if you're trying to go for a realistic photo. Every single professional DSLR is going to have a depth of field. It's unavoidable, and you actually want it in 99% of cases. To quickly be able to focus it though, hold control on your keyboard and then click on the car. Click on the center of the car and there you go. This is actually a really nice depth of field that we have set right here for our aperture. But if you wanna make it more blurred background, you can scroll the F number, the aperture down, or if you want it to be pretty much unblurred, you can put it all the way to F32. But I actually kinda of liked it in this F4 right here. I do actually kinda of like the little blurriness of the wing right there. As you can see, we're adhering to that lower thirds rule. The car is in this kind of bottom corner of the screen. We can zoom it in a tiny little bit more there. I do like that. There we go. Now, finally, the thing you're gonna wanna do is going to be your shutter speed right here. Now, for realistic photos, I would never go past 1-200. As much as a super high shutter speed looks very nice, it's not realistic, you wouldn't be getting a that much blur with motion if you're a stationary object taking a photo of a moving object like a car. So for this, just to give it a little bit of blur, and it does actually look more realistic with some rather than with none, 1200 is going to be the most you're gonna to wanna to do in pretty much every situation. Now this is a fantastic photo and this is the realistic lighting angle that you would get if you were actually taking this photo in real life. So if you're trying to have the strictest real life photos possible, then you're done. But I personally don't think it's a sin to come in here and change your lighting angle. I do actually really love this lighting angle. I think we can make it a little bit more dramatic there, literally that. I think that is a fantastic looking photo, but you can go really crazy with it if you want something like this. This doesn't look terrible either. Uh, kind of a rule for me personally, what I think looks good is to just have a... You either want the shadowed side to be pretty much the full side that you're taking or the full sunny side. You don't kind of want like a weird like half angle like this it just doesn't really look right to me personally if it looks fine to you then that's great if you want to do a backlit angle that looks okay as well but I think for me personally in this photo I do think like this minus 21 right here is actually pretty nice actually can make it a little bit more dramatic there we go I like that hit take shot it'll load and boom, you are done. We can open up our file explorer here and take a look at this image. I think it looks very, very nice. So the next thing I kind of want to show you is a more wide angle photo. This is going to be photos that you can get really nice and close up with. You're probably going to be doing these most commonly on like street circuits and things like that. Uh, we do have this little niche right here um, between the tire wall and the actual wall and the pit entrance. I highly doubt this is a place in real life any photographer could stand, but it's a game and it's still technically a realistic angle because we're near a wall, so don't at me there. Uh, you're going to have, again, a higher FOV on this one, less zoom, and this is one of those photos where you can definitely not really adhere to the lower thirds. Well, you can do something like this, which does look nice, but just having the photo being centered and having the car as the centerpiece is what's really going to look nice here. Again, we already have our shutter speed set up from our previous one. We can change our lighting angle a little bit here, make it a little bit more dramatic. Let's see what we could do. I actually did not mind this original one, but... I think if we can shadow, oop, I accidentally hit my left click. Don't do that if you're trying to do this. Uh, can I go back a little bit? Let's see, just kind of a, oop, there we go. 
That looks nice, and we're still in line with the wall. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I actually don't mind this. I think maybe sh giving a little bit more shadow to this side. There we go. That does look quite nice. Again, we already have our shutter speed set up once again, so we can take this screenshot, and I think that looks very, very nice right there. If you're taking these closer-up photos, most of the time you're going to want a little bit more lead room, so this would be like an extreme version of it. If you noticed, it was just a tiny bit off-centered. Uh, this looks okay, but it does look a little weird. Uh, so if you're really close up like this, then that's where you're going to want to have a little bit more room in the front of the frame, in front of the car, compared to the back. And one more one I can show off here is the really realistic photos, and that's where you go to these on a track. These are actual holes in the catch fences for photographers to take photos. A lot of tracks you're going to have in a Seto course, I'm sure, are going to have these if they're worth their scratch. So if you want a really realistic angle, this is a very nice photo as well with this Michelin uh, bridge, I think it is actually, right here. We're going to zoom this in a little bit, although I do actually kind of want the bridge in here. So I do think this is going to be a little bit more of a, you know... We're not really focused on the car, we're kind of focused on the scenery. This is going to be one of those times where I'm actually going to decrease our aperture a little bit. I do want a little bit more blur on that. I think that looks very, very nice. And then finally, the lighting angle, I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. I think having that... Eh, I think that looks good. I like having this Michelin one a little darker. Now, when you're this zoomed out, I can say that you can maybe put this down to like 125, and this will still look pretty natural. Uh, but I, again, wouldn't go definitely much lower than 125, but 1200 for most photos is going to be fine. So the other main type of car photograph is going to be rollers. And that's what we're going to look at right here. We have this beautiful RX-7 here on Shitoko. Now, rollers, let's talk about them. So you want to keep these, first of all, grounded in realism. So rollers, you, of course, achieve by a camera car. Another car would be driving alongside or in front of or behind this Mazda at a similar speed to be taking these photographs. You can get a bit more creative with angles though because we do have the whole road. However, one thing I would definitely not recommend you do is take photos too high. And also don't take them ridiculously low. You could never really get a camera this low to the ground like a tire shot. However, you can definitely get pretty low angles of course. Maybe something like this would definitely be fine. Pretty much bumper height of whatever car you're going to be at is going to be a relatively good looking photograph. So we do have a lot more freedom. Again, we can do a full pretty much 360 degrees around this car and it will all look fine. The best kind of roller shots though are going to be three main types. Coming at it from this kind of diagonal angle where you see the bumper and the side of the car, whichever bumper and side of the car that is, head on like this or tail on. These look okay, but these are a little bit more kind of artsy shots. You really want to have something in the background, like this brick wall wouldn't look super duper good. But if you had some really pretty scenery or something like that, then this could look very good. But the vast majority of rollers you're going to see are definitely going to be at these angles. So let's take a photo at all three of them. So let's start here. I do really like actually having these cities in the background. We'll open up photo mode right here. Of course, focus the camera by holding control and clicking on the front of our car. Since we're a little closer here, uh, we will zoom in a tiny bit. I think that looks good. Rollers, you do want to have a little bit more uh, dead space on the side for them to really look good. We'll go to our aperture here, turn our F number up a little bit so we can get a little bit more of the wing and back of the car here in focus. Again, we could set up our shutter speed to 1 200. And of course, if you're at night, lighting angle isn't really going to do much of anything. Uh, if you're in the daytime, of course, though, you can mess around with this. But besides that, you can also add some tilt, of course. I think for this shot, though, do having it pretty much dead on is definitely a good looking photograph right here. Take the shot. There we go. I think that looks very, very nice right there. Now, the next type is, of course, our head-on shots. These are going to look really, really cool if you have something above the car. So, in this case, we do have this bridge. I'll see. Is there anything kind of cooler? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. This looks not bad right here. I'll take this. 
We are in this third lane as well, so that actually does look a little weird. If you're going to be taking head-on or back-on photos, I recommend being in the center of the road. However, if you are doing these side-on shots, being in the final lane like this isn't too, too bad. All right, I do think this looks quite all right. Now, there's two types of head-on shots that are going to look really nice. First one is a zoomed-in shot like this. This is going to be a little bit more of a dramatic-looking photograph right here. This lighting actually isn't great when we zoom it in. Let's try to get a little bit brighter um, street lights here. There we go. That doesn't look that bad. And this would be a good photograph, again, for especially a head-on shot like this. Try to have the camera as level as possible. You don't really want a lot of tilt because, I mean, this looks pretty weird. Uh, but if you just have it dead on like this, I think this looks very, very nice. Take the shot with this. That looks super duper nice. The other type right here would be to get nice up close with the car. Say uh, you're a pretty ballsy driver and you're really getting close to the bumper of your camera car. We can zoom out here and this will give you a pretty cool um, wide angle shot. I wouldn't go too wide. Uh, just a little bit. Definitely want to have the headlight light on the ground. It's going to make all the photos look very, very nice. And then you can take this here. Wrong button, chief. <laughs> That's pretty much where we were. We can take the photo right here, and you will see this looks very, very nice as well. We take a look at both. Here was our close-up shot. These are personally my favorite for rollers as being a little closer, but here is a wide-angle one as well. It actually wasn't in focus here. We will uh, we'll do, give that one a little bit of a retake. There we go. It got out of focus a little bit because we moved closer. There's a tip to watch your focus. Even someone who does this a lot can make those little mistakes. There you go. Both of these look absolutely fantastic. I'd actually kind of mess up a little bit. If I could go back, I'd get a little bit more of the light in this photo. I retook the close-up photo. Now we have a little bit more of the light on the ground. Looking very, very nice. And also, I know I already mentioned it, that you don't really want these head-on shots to be at an angle, but also make sure that the camera is centered for me, and uh, most monitors, I'm sure, have a logo at the center and the bottom. Line up the badge of the car with your logo on your monitor. That's always a pretty quick and dirty way. You don't really want something like this unless you have another car right here. And again, vice versa, something like this unless you have another car right here. So the final one is going to be the ass photos, the back photos right here. It's a very similar principle. You're going to have two, uh, the wide shots and the zoomed in shots. With these though, they're going to be a little bit cooler, especially if you're on a track like Shotoko, because you have all of these nice illuminated road signs and you are definitely going to want to take advantage of them. I think coming from a little lower right here, and getting that, there we go, that looks very, very nice indeed. I wish there was a little bit more street light in this photo, uh, but it's still not bad. Just to differentiate, I think we'll take a sunset Shotoko photo. I definitely think having this car shaded back here, we don't want direct sun on it, that's not going to look very good. Um, just doing something like this, actually, I really like the brightness of this building right here. Take this photo. Roller boom looks very nice. If you have a car that shoots flames out of the exhaust, that's going to look very, very cool as well. And the final one is going to be that rear quarter panel shot. This is one that you can add some uh, tilt to and it will look pretty nice. Again, I wouldn't really do that with the front a ton, depending on what car it is, you can get away with it. Uh, but for me personally, at least most of the time, uh, I don't like having like front quarter panel kind of shots tilted. I think it looks a little strange in a lot of scenarios. But for this one here, uh, try to find something nice like that. I do think that looks quite nice. Let's turn our brake lights back on. Let's actually just make it darker again. What happened to my, my brake lights here, man? We'll hit replay again, and that will fix that. We could take a nighttime photo here. Get some brightness. Actually, we can go under this uh, right here. And let's see. There we go. That looks quite nice. We can refocus it, zoom it in a tiny bit. Uh, another one that looks cool is kind of like this right here from the back shots. Uh, these look very, very cool. Do this. I think that is a very nice looking photo. 
I definitely think my two favorite photographs are the close-up right here of the Mazda for our rollers and then this one right here for the Corvette. This is a very, very nice looking angle. This is definitely the runner-up though. Corkscrew always looks fantastic, very photogenic. As I'm sure you noticed by the runtime of this video, if you're still here, we're not getting into Photoshop or anything like that. This video is already long enough. Uh, this is just about composition and taking some very nice and realistic looking photographs here in Assetto Corsa. If you like my graphic settings, once again, this is my post-processing filter, Premiere 5.0. It's currently in a paid early access. However, it will be free on Race Department for everyone on September 17th. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. If you did enjoy this video, a like and a sub would mean a lot. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one, guys.